According to a report released by the World Gold Council in November, central banks around the world bought a net 399.3 tons of gold in the third quarter of 2022, namely from July to September. It's much higher than the 186 tons in the previous quarter and the 87.7 tons in the first quarter. The report mentioned that about 300 tons of gold were bought by unknown buyers. That is, only about a quarter of the buyers were made public, while the remaining three quarters were bought by undisclosed, anonymous buyers. China rarely discloses how much gold its central bank buys. Surprisingly, on December 7, 2022, China's official website released data showing that the People's Bank of China's gold holdings increased by 32 tons in November from the previous month to a total of 1,980 tons, making it the world's sixth largest central bank gold reserve. This is the first update in six years, so this data shocked market observers. To some extent, it also reveals the identity of the mysterious buyer of the 300-ton gold market, which is likely to be China. An analyst at UBS, a multinational investment bank and financial services company from Switzerland, said, Gold holdings in China as part of the total reserves are still very low, so there is probably room for further purchases down the road. The World Gold Council reported in November that the net gold purchases by global central banks between July and September were four times higher than in the same period last year, reaching 399.3 tons. So far this year, net gold purchases have been gradually increasing. The total volume from January to September has exceeded the largest net purchase volume in a single year since data was recorded in 1967. From what can be seen in the public data, the central banks bought only about 90 tons of gold, while the remaining nearly 300 tons of gold was bought anonymously. Some financial and precious metal analysts say that some of the buyers are unidentified, which is to be expected, but such a high percentage of anonymity is unprecedented. At the time, speculation about the anonymous buyer began to spread, with a growing number of economists suggesting that the freezing of Russian assets abroad due to the sanctions over the invasion of Ukraine has increased the willingness of countries in opposition to Europe and the U.S. to hold gold domestically. Citing data from China's General Administration of Customs, Russian media RBK reported that China imported 5.72 tons of gold from Russia in the first 10 months of the year. 1.9 times the amount of gold imported in the same period in 2021. In terms of currency, the delivery volume jumped 1.8 times to US $330 million from January to October this year. A market expert also revealed that Russian gold is being sold to China at a 30% discount, and Asian and Middle Eastern countries are among the buyers of Russian gold. Russia is the world's leading gold producer, producing over 300 tons of gold annually. Why is Russia selling its gold at a discount? The main reason is that following the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the London Bullion Market Association LBMA, suspended the certification of Russian precious metals refiners, banning them from selling new products in London as of March 7, 2022. To further stem the flow of Russian gold, in June 2022, G7 leaders met for three days in Germany where the US, UK and Canada and Japan officially announced a ban on the import of Russian gold, joined by the EU and Switzerland in July. Official Chinese figures show that China imported US 108.8 million worth of Russian gold in July, a jump of 750% from the previous month's total of US 12.7 million and about 50 times the amount imported in the same month last year, including both raw gold and semi-finished products. In addition to Russia, Switzerland exported US $26.5 billion worth of gold to China in the first 10 months of the year. Canada exported US $9.7 billion worth of gold to China. South Africa's precious metal sales to China totaled US $7.7 billion, while Australia and Germany exported US $7.2 billion and US $775 million of gold, respectively. So China is hoarding a lot of gold in 2022. Why is China importing so much gold? For Beijing, the need to find a substitute for the dollar has never been stronger. Relations between the U.S. and China have become increasingly strained after the U.S. took measures against Chinese semiconductor companies. Meanwhile, the series of events following Russia's invasion of Ukraine suggests that Washington will impose sanctions on the central bank reserves of another country. 
First of all, Beijing is increasing its gold purchases to hedge against risk and to prevent contingencies such as sanctions from the U.S. and Europe. Beijing must be prepared to face a Western financial embargo and reduce its reliance on the dollar. Increasing its gold reserves is one way to do this. This is similar to what Russia has done. Since its annexation of Crimea in 2014, Russia has been increasing its gold holdings every year, becoming the world's fifth largest gold reserve holder with nearly 2,300 tons of reserves. Secondly, the Fed has been raising interest rates, resulting in a severe depreciation of the RMB against the USD. By increasing gold imports and expanding gold reserves, China can reduce the short-term impact of U.S. dollar interest rate hikes on the RMB. How can the Beijing government, which has a very tight central budget, get so much money to buy gold? In fact, China is selling U.S. Treasuries. According to the U.S. Treasury Department, Beijing has been selling U.S. Treasuries since the Russian invasion of Ukraine in February this year, selling a total of U.S. 121.2 billion, equivalent to 2,200 tons of gold, by the end of September. Therefore, it's logical to assume that China sold U.S. Treasuries and used the funds to buy gold from Russia. China, the second largest U.S. creditor, saw its holdings of U.S. Treasuries fall to U.S. 933.6 billion in September, the sixth consecutive month below U.S. 1 trillion and the lowest level since June 2010. Finally, China's increase in gold imports should also serve to enhance the international status of the renminbi, the Chinese currency, and to increase the pricing power of the Shanghai Gold Exchange, breaking the dollar's dominance. The Chinese government established the Shanghai Gold Exchange in 2002, specializing in gold and other precious metals trading. Since 2018, the Shanghai Gold Exchange has become the third largest gold exchange in the world, after New York and London. Media reports suggest that Russia is also working on its own international precious metal standard and may have a fixed price in national currency. The Russian Ministry of Finance said the creation of a new Moscow World Standard (MWS) is essential to make the precious metals industry work properly, and has an alternative to the London Bullion Market Association. According to a report by the Malaysia-based Hua Chau Daily, on October 20th, officials from the Russian Ministry of Finance said that the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Industry and Trade, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange are in talks to allow two Russian gold refiners to trade on the Shanghai Exchange. Currently, several Russian banks have become members of the Shanghai Gold Exchange, including the largest Russian banks. In addition, the Russian National Clearing Center and the Moscow Exchange are members of the Shanghai Gold Exchange. What are the benefits for Russia and China? For Russia, if it can trade gold in Shanghai, it doesn't have to rely on the gold markets in New York and London, thus breaking away from the ban on sales in Western countries. It would also be easier for the Chinese Communist authorities to buy Russian gold through the Shanghai Gold Exchange. Therefore, with the common goal of de-dollarization, it would be easy for Russia and China to reach this cooperation. For the past 20 years, the communist leaders have been trying to reform the global financial system and weaken the dominance of the U.S. dollar. This strategy consists of two elements: the development of a global commodities trading system based on the RMB and the creation of a new reserve currency to challenge the dollar's dominance. The above is the story of gold in China. Now let's take a look at the world. Why are central banks all over the world sweeping gold at this time? Currently, foreign exchange reserves are still mostly in favor of the U.S. dollar, and gold is the first choice outside of the U.S. dollar. Central banks around the world are buying gold mainly for risk aversion because gold has high liquidity and a very low risk of sovereign debt. In particular, the collapse of Lehman Brothers in 2008 has shaken people's confidence in U.S. Treasury bonds and other dollar-denominated assets. So, over the years, major central banks and institutions began to stockpile large amounts of gold. Precious metal analysts believe that the world's central banks will continue to be net buyers of gold because of its stable price and status as a stateless currency. Central banks don't usually sell gold through the general market, so the more the de-dollarization accelerates, the more central banks will buy, which will continue to support the price of gold. In the WGC report in November, it was mentioned that the gold buyers reported between July and September this year were mainly emerging countries. Turkey was the largest buyer during the quarter, adding 31 tons of gold to its reserves. This country has one of the highest inflation rates in the world, with an inflation rate of more than 85% in October, 
the country's highest level since 1998. The second largest buyer, Uzbekistan, was also notable for its purchase of 26.13 tons. Gold's share of the country's U.S. $32 billion in foreign exchange reserves has now risen to nearly two-thirds, the highest among the developing economies tracked by the WGC this time. In a mid-November interview with Bloomberg, the deputy chairman of Uzbekistan's central bank said two factors dominate their hoarding behavior, namely current prices and future prices. Since the beginning of 2022, the price of gold fell by about 9.3%. Since March 2022, gold has fallen for seven months in a row, the longest streak of decline since the late 1960s. Other countries that have been buying heavily include India with 17.46 tons, Qatar with 15 tons, and Mozambique with 2.33 tons. Central banks can use gold to control the value of their currencies or to pay for imports during a crisis. Gold reserves also come in handy when difficulties arise in servicing foreign debt. This is reflected in a number of developing countries with stagnant economies. As a result of dwindling foreign exchange reserves and a plunge of more than 40% of its currency against the dollar, Ghana recently announced that it would use gold instead of dollars to buy oil. In order to have enough gold reserves, earlier this December, Ghana announced that starting next year it will be mandatory for large domestic mining companies to sell 20% of their gold stocks to the country's central bank. Now, the importance of gold is not only in emerging countries or developing countries with stagnant economies. The overall global economic situation is one of low growth, high inflation, and high debt, and gold is a safe haven for global investors against the volatility of financial markets. For governments, gold has also been seen as a hedge against inflation. However, since the collapse of the gold standard, the value of money has been de-linked from gold, resulting in gold's anti-inflationary effect being much less than before. This is why we see that in 2022, the gold price has fallen for seven consecutive months, the biggest drop in a row since 1968. So, what is the gold standard? The gold standard began in the mid-19th century when the value of a country's currency depended on the amount of gold it contained or the amount of gold it could be exchanged for. The exchange rate between different countries is also determined by the ratio of the gold content of the respective currencies to gold. Under the gold standard, the value of a currency is stable and the exchange rate between currencies is stable, so inflation doesn't exist and the government doesn't have the flexibility to manipulate the value of the currency. After the Bretton Woods Conference in July 1944, the gold standard evolved into the dollar standard, but at that time the dollar was still pegged to gold. It wasn't until 1971 that the U.S. stopped converting the U.S. dollar to gold, leading to the complete collapse of the gold standard. Since then, countries have been able to issue paper money without restriction, opening the door to currency devaluation and inflationary policies. This has also led to violent fluctuations in exchange rates and impacted the world exchange rate system. In 2022, the Federal Reserve and other central banks raised interest rates significantly, leading to higher U.S. bond yields and a stronger dollar, which has weakened gold's appeal and offset the boost to gold from high inflation. However, gold is still helpful to some extent in its own right. Despite the Fed tightening monetary policy at the most aggressive pace in over 40 years, U.S. bank rates continue to soar, and gold has come off its highs, but it has not plunged as much as some expected. Now, as we have seen, central banks purchased a record 399 tons of gold in the third quarter of 2022, worth about $20 billion, nearly four times the amount they purchased in the same period last year, and bringing the total purchases so far this year to the highest since 1967. In other words, the central bank's buying spree of gold has helped stabilize the price. Today, central banks are continuing their trajectory of curbing high inflation by raising interest rates. The fatal consequence of excessive interest rate hikes is that they undermine investor confidence and accelerate the country's economic decline. The root cause of high inflation is actually the overissuance of money by central banks. As central banks continue to raise interest rates, even if inflation is eventually brought under control, the world is facing the risk of recession. It's worthwhile for governments to think about whether they should return to the gold standard in order to fundamentally solve the various financial chaos that currently exists. On the topic of gold, we will expand on Eastern culture for the audience's reference. 
The traditional culture of China over thousands of years has been very special. It's very different from Western empirical science. It focuses on the direct connection between the human body, the universe, and the higher beings, the beings that humans refer to as gods or the divine, and contemplates the meaning of human existence. Such a culture provides us with some unique perspectives when facing global crises and problems. Many people see in the Eastern Buddhist scriptures that the Buddha's world is made of gold and is full of riches and treasures. Many Chinese believe that gold also has the effect of warding off evil spirits, which means that it's associated with the positive energy of the universe and with the divine. We know that gold has been a store of wealth for thousands of years and is considered a stateless currency with no issuer and high liquidity. But few people think about it. Who defined the concept of gold's value and who brought gold to the world so that people of different colors and languages all over the world can recognize and accept the value of gold? It has been popular around the world for thousands of years, but no historian or archaeologist can give a complete account of its origin. The origin of gold is so mysterious. If we can really go back to the gold standard, does it represent the return of a traditional value? or even the return of the connection between mankind and the divine.